For at TV, the world is thinking. So today's manufacturing robots are big and stiff. They're unsafe for people to be around. They're engineered to be precise, precise and repeatable, not adaptable. And they only operate in very structured environments. And normal workers can't touch them. They can't get near them. They're specially engineered to do the same thing again and again. So it's not cost effective to build stuff for Walmart where you're changing the product every three months or every six months because the, the setup time for the line might be a year. Now, s most of you in the audience are too young to remember this, but back in the old days, ordinary people couldn't touch computers. They were hidden away behind glass walls and special engineers dealt with them and you just got a fan fold printout on your desk and if you didn't like the numbers you were getting it had to go through um, systems analysis and programming and punch card operators and, and computer operators and if you were lucky a few weeks later you'd get a new series of numbers coming along. But then there was the revolution with the PC and now ordinary people can touch computers and so we've just seen an amazing abundance of new ways of using computers unthought of 30 years ago because ordinary people get to touch them all the time. Today our robots in factories, ordinary people can't touch them. You know, what if ordinary people could touch robots? What if ordinary people got to interact with them and use them? And we're starting to see that in fact, not in industrial robots but in other places. So top left there is the Da Vinci system from Intuitive Surgical just down the peninsula here, which ordinary people Surgeons, if you call surgeons ordinary people, uh, are, are using those robots to operate uh, on people. On the top right, uh, uh, well, the rest of the slide is robots from one of my companies, iRobot. Over four million robots in people's homes where you don't program them. Ordinary people press the clean button and they're clean. Across the bottom there, robots in Iraq and Afghanistan. There were zero ground robots in the US military in 2000, the year 2002. There's now over 10,000 of them. There's going to be hundreds of thousands before too long. So now ordinary 19-year-old kids who are off in Iraq are given a robot to use to deal with improvised explosive devices, and they're using them, and they're saving lives uh, for the soldiers. So ordinary people are now able to touch robots. We haven't quite got that into ma the manufacturing domain yet, but I think there's a lot of stuff happening in labs which and this is one, some from one of my, one of my lab at, at MIT, is a robot grabbing something. This is Aaron Edzinger, who's now got a little company in San Francisco called Mechabot, where he's interacting with this robot. It's safe to touch the robot. Here he's giving it an object it's never seen before. It's grasping it, and then it moves it against the background to uh, estimate its size. <coughs> this is sped up, but this, is a, this was funded by NASA for a robot to help out an astronaut and you see the robot following him around and being where he is, being a sort of extra pair of hands. Here you see a view from the robot's uh, uh, eyes. It's holding a hammer. It's never seen that hammer before. It's in front of uh, a background which is very difficult to separate out the object, but it's able to separate it out and very quickly predict the kinematics of that, that uh, hammer as it moves around, predict where it will be. And this is, thank you Gordon Moore for Moore's Law to make the vision that fast. Here he's giving the robot uh, something in its right hand, something in its left hand. Hasn't seen either of these before. It moves them around against the background to determine their, their size and extent. And it knows its task is to insert the thing in its right hand into the thing in its left hand. And here you see it managing to do that without being programmed for that particular object, without knowing a CAD model of that, just like you would give a person a, a something and say, put, put the thing in your right hand in the thing in your left hand the robot's able to do that. So we're able to do that in the lab now and as I see everything happening here with the makers it's the stuff that people are doing here is just a very few years what was really hard to do, uh, go was really hard to do in the lab so I think there's great opportunities here to, to up our game on what we're going to build our robots to do and ultimately then help in factories.